regular season is wrapping up and we're getting ready for playoff time in high school basketball, plus an in-depth look at one of the greatest coaches in Philadelphia basketball history, next on Varsity Voice, presented by SFBN. Welcome to another edition of Varsity Voice presented by SFBN. I'm your host, Ari Bluestein, my co-host as always, Mike Samsel, and we are getting into the high school basketball playoffs now and the Friends League in the thick of it. And they've got two championship games on Friday night. I wanted to start with the girls. And the one seed is Abington Friends, and they have just been very good this year. Abington Friends has been great this year. You look at how well-rounded this team is. They have three players in Jay Jung, Alyssa Denorfa, and Paige Mott. Paige Mott is really good down in the post. Uh, a six-foot freshman, has some moves in the paint, rebounds the basketball well, averaging close to 18 points per game. She is very good, and she's got a couple of good guards around her in Denorfa and Jade Young. Young, a Division One player. Uh, Dunorfa looks like she's heading to Division Two. She'll be playing at Mansfield next year. Paige Mott, the sky is the limit at six foot and only a freshman. She can get better. She can get bigger. You know, I I'm interested to see where her career ends up. But when those are your three off the top, you got a pretty darn good basketball team. Yeah, 21 and three overall, 8 and 0 in league play, and defeated the two seed Shipley. And that was Shipley's only blemish in league play. But that was a great game because it, when Shipley played them, Shipley was up by one at the half. And their star player, Lauren Ross, actually shot four of 20. So I think the rematch is going to be very intriguing. I agree. And listen, if Sunday night taught us anything, postseason experience, pretty important. <laughs> Shipley's got a lot of it. Four state championship games in five years. Uh, their captain, Yindia Bobo, has been in so many of these games. I, I don't think this is a team that's going to be intimidated by the moment, if you will. Shipley knows what it takes to win in the postseason. That matters. Yeah, I think it's really a toss-up between those two teams. But on the boys' side, a little bit different. You've got West Town as the one seed, one of the best teams in the whole country. And we've talked about it before. Can anybody beat West Town? Well, listen, Shipley kept it close the first time they played. 64-60 to 60 was the final in that game. Asterix, no Mo Bamba or Cam Reddish. <laughs> that kind of matters. Yes, it does. Uh, no, is the answer. Uh, I, I think Shipley's a really good basketball team. Any other year, any other league, we're talking about a state championship contender. Kion Hardy is very good. Sam Sessoms is a really good guard. Sorry. You're, I mean, you're <laughs> playing a team that might win the Big Ten. It, this this West Ham team is just that. Uh, it really is. They're 26-2. and two. They haven't lost since early December, and their only two losses on the year have been to teams out of state. So I, I think West Down is, I think they're going to win, but Shipley could keep it close. You might need 43 from Sessoms, but they could keep it close. Yeah, they could absolutely keep it close. There's a ton of talent on this team. There's just not West Town talent. Yeah, totally agree. But we will see on Friday night at Haverford College, doubleheader in the Friends League Championship Games. When we return, a very special documentary here on Varsity Voice presented by SFBN. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAY-EASY. Flippin' Shakes has everything from burgers to sandwiches to delicious milkshakes. The sports fan base network crew chows down on a variety of favorites from classic egg creams to the trending mac and cheese burger. Located at 233 2nd Street Pike in Southampton, you can dine in or take out. Flippin' Shakes, great food, great service, a flippin' good time. For me? Yes. You. You like pro sports? Yeah. You like college sports? Of course. You like high school sports? I guess. 
Maybe you just don't know much about them. Hey, voice in the sky. Huh? Where can I go to learn more about Philadelphia Area High School Athletics? Just watch Varsity Voice every Thursday on TCN and CSN. This segment is brought to you by Valley Financial Group. Certified financial planners that organize your financial life and design plans for leaving your legacy. Valley Financial Group, helping you live the life you earned. If you're a basketball fan of Philadelphia, I don't have to tell you about William Speedy Morris. Or do I? You know the name. You know the coach. You know the wins. But do you know the person? You know what, when I think of Speedy Morris, and I, and I could would be asked to describe Speedy Morris in, in just a few words, I would just simply say, what a great guy. Speedy Morris has been a presence in Philadelphia sports since the early 60s. He has coached at three prestigious high schools, a Big Five University, and is approaching a thousand wins. Actually, uh, on Roman's floor, Speedy's name's on the floor, so I, I think I literally stepped on his uh, but you always remind it that, um, you know, when you, when you did look down, you see his name and how much uh, pride there is behind Speedy Morris. You, you knew you were always coaching for something bigger than just your team. I took the job, you know, I, was, I was 17 years old, coaching 13, 14 year old kids. I loved it right from the start. And uh, ever since then, I wanted to coach. I mean, I've been blessed uh, to coach at so many great schools. Uh, Roman Catholic High School, Penn Charter, and, and St. Joseph Prep, arguably three of the best high schools in the history of this city. I've been a head coach there, and, and at LaSalle University, I've been blessed to coach there for 17 years. The Big Five, which was always a dream, playing at the Plester, our first few years at LaSalle, it was our home games and with the Plester, and it's been great, I've been very blessed. It's an honor to play for uh, Speedy Morris, you know, he's a legend in Philadelphia basketball, both college and high school, and uh, it's great because you know every game you're always having an advantage over the opponent because he just provides that extra boost to help you uh, win the game. Playing for Speedy Morris is very amazing. Uh, just the respect and the pedigree he has in the sport. Uh, you can never go anywhere without hearing his name. Uh, it's very great. It was just an honor to play for him. Playing for Speedy was uh, one of the best experiences of my entire life. It influenced my decision to become a coach. And I think a lot of coaches now had that influence in their life um, that made them want to be coaches. Well, those two years at Penn Charter, the family atmosphere that we had, and I had with my, my friends, Joe McGarvey, Ed Small, Marvin, the Dunmire brothers, you know, it was just, uh, it was just an incredible, incredible uh, time in my life. I mean, our families all got along, everything got along, and I just, always had that in the back of my mind. If I ever could do something like that for kids and for families and stuff like that, it would, it would just be, it would be great. You know, and he, he's, he's just been a big influence on me. And I just wanted to try to duplicate whatever he could do, whatever he did for us, for, our, for my guys down the road. It was just a great experience playing for. Uh, but I wanted to coach. Went to Speedy and told him what I wanted to do. And he said, if you want to coach, come down with me. And ended up spending five or six years down there and it was, it was great, uh, and since then I've been coaching for 30 years. I think we're similar in ways in terms of our, our, our passion and our intensity. Um, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I think you only do things one way, and that's hard and, and, and passionate and, and having a love for what you do. And I, I just take from Coach, you know, how he treats people. But it was uh, a tremendous experience. And, and because of my experiences being around coach, it, it made me become, want to become a coach. To be able to say I played for him was great. To be able to coach alongside him, be his buddy, uh, has probably been the greatest thrill for me uh, as his career evolves and you know eventually ends somewhere down the road here. Coach Mars, the thing that stands out to me at this moment and as I continue to watch him as an individual is his passion for the game, uh, number one. Number two is his love for his players and everyone who are centered within their, their universe. When you saw him, you knew right away this was a man that cared. And as a result of his caring, you would go the extra mile. I, and I always went the extra mile because of that.
The thing about Speedy Morris is Speedy Morris engendered great respect from everybody because he gave great respect to everybody. It was never a, a, a moment where Speedy Morris fired something at a member of the media or tried to be wise to them or try to try to scold them or make them feel that they didn't know anything about the game. He treated the members of the media with warmth, with respect. He was fun to be around. It was in some ways fun to cover because he, he made it fun. First year I covered him was his first year at LaSalle 86, 87. And from the, really from the moment I showed up, he went out of his way to make my job easy. And frankly, I think he got an understanding of that if, if I got to learn more, there was the potential for writing more and better informed stories about him and his program. And that was true from the moment I walked into the gym uh, in the winter of 1987 until Speedy's last season. The mark of a great coach relies on sustainability. Success and respect isn't granted, but it's earned on and off the court. I'm pushing the ball good. We make good decisions, better decisions, all right? Let's go. Now let's go. Good, the floor. Good. good job. The Watch for the change of defense now. Watch for the change of defense. Right. Well, we okay. one, ball one. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, 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 let's go. Keep it up. Here we go. Three, one, two, three. Right. Let's go. I think your uh, influence you can have on kids, uh, especially a high school coach, can have a lot more inter inter influence than a, high, a college coach can. Kids today are great still. Uh, people ask me all the time, what's the difference between coaching now and when I started in the 60s? Uh, and, and there's not much of a difference outside. The kids want to know why. You know, I used to tell them before, just do anything, they would do it. Now they want to know why. If you have a good reason, they'll do it. They still want discipline, they still want to be motivated, and kids are great. Speedy Morris is a great communicator. I think you have to have communication skills to succeed in any field, and as a coach, that means so much. He didn't operate by fear tactics. He didn't do a lot of yelling at the team. And when he had to turn it on, when Speedy had to get them ready, he could, he could convey the sense of urgency. But they liked Speedy. They really liked Speedy. It wasn't fear. They played for him out of respect. I think the, the, the number one reason is uh, preparation. Uh, the thing that I still think about when uh, I think about Coach in the times prior to season starting was the first three weeks of practice, we never even touched a basketball. And if you think about that today, unheard of, but that was just getting you ready fundamentally to do all the things necessary to be prepared to play the game. He stays true to who he is, I think. Um, he's changed with the game. He's really adapted. That's what people that don't understand the game and the way that the game's changed from when he first started a long, long time ago until now. Um, he's been able to adjust and adapt. He's a tremendous teacher uh, of the game of basketball, but he's a very caring person. That's something that's very special. I don't think a lot of coaches have that, have that sense of, you know, a young person and, and, and getting to know a young person. And he, he, has, that, he has that knack. And I think that has allowed him to, to be able to coach uh, for, for, such a, for such a long time. To be a great coach over a long period of time is a really, really hard thing to do. I really believe uh, it's the fact that these kids know he's like a father figure to them, now almost a grandfather figure. He's here for them 365 days a year. He's here not only as a coach, He's here to give life lessons. In sports, wins and numbers create your mark on paper, but the legacy of Speedy Morris goes far beyond the record books. His legacy is probably the fact that I don't know if there's a greater man for others. Uh, you wouldn't know what to talk to him. He's as humble as you get. Um, there's a quote on the wall in the palestra by him uh, about the big five, cheese steaks, tasty cakes, Philadelphia. Speedy Morris is part of that quote. He's cheesesteaks, he's tasty cakes, he's Philadelphia. He's as loyal as you get. Uh, and his legacy, what can I say? Um, one of the best ever. Not only coaches, but human beings. Wow, he's an old timer, I guess. I mean, he's been Philly. I mean, he still lives in the house he lives in when, when he coached me. I mean, he's just an all time Philly guy.
all timers the first thing that comes to my head. All time to me, all time coach, all time friend, just an all time good guy. I, I think he's his legacy is gonna go down to as as one of the best people slash coaches to ever to ever be involved in in the game. So yeah, I think his legacy is that he has a, a resume unique to one person, Speedy Mars. I think Coach Morris' legacy is one of winning and also winning off the court. I think he's a great guy. He's uh, just friendly, funny, just a great coach. I think he'll be remembered just as a winner on the court and off the court. He's a better man than he's a basketball coach, and that's really saying something with, with somebody like Speedy Morris. Yeah, Speedy's definitely going to go down as one of the greatest coaches to coach in the Philly, Philly area. You know, he's definitely a Hall of Famer. You can't, you can't ignore that. So, you know, I feel like Speedy is going to be one of the best coaches to come from this area. I think when you look back now um, and look at Speedy's legacy, he is the dean of, of coaches in, in Philly. I always say it's a reflection of how many players that he coached that are now coaching. I mean, there's probably, you know, hundreds of guys that have played for him that are now coaches. And I think that's something to be said for that. They almost looked at him like maybe I wanted to be like him in some way. So I think that's pretty impressive. The fact that he impacted every team with which he worked. Every team that was coached by Speedy Morris was successful and every player who played for Speedy Morris, young men, young women, came out of it as better people and better athletes. Legacy will be, will be you know, remembered as somebody who was a coach, uh, a father, uh, a friend, a mentor uh, to so many people, and uh, including myself. And I think when people think of Speedy Mars, they think, you know, it just doesn't get better than that. As a human being does not get better than that. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what he'll be remembered by. Here's an individual that took a simple game of basketball and made it everything. And not only made it just a game, he made it part of life. And I think most folks will realize uh, Speedy's legacy is about life. And he used the tool of basketball to show you this is how you do it. And this is how you share it. Uh, the wins and losses, I mean, those numbers speak for themselves. I think what uh, all of us need to just realize is how important and how many different lives he has affected athletically, but also personally. And I don't think you can put a, a measure or one, one blank statement. Uh, I think what you do is just uh, nod your head and say, job, well done. Well, I don't know. There's so many great people in Philadelphia. You know, I just hope I can be part of it. I just hope people will say that I, I, I was fair, I was honest, I did a good job. That would be great. Serving the community since 1974, Northeast Racquet Club and Fitness Center is perfect for the whole family. We provide a complete schedule of children's activities for ages 2 and a half through 12 and a full-service fitness center for teens, adults, and seniors. Our sports arena features year-round roller hockey and seasonal indoor soccer leagues. Tennis, racquetball, aquatics, basketball, dance, karate, group exercise classes are all available to groups of all ages. Stop by and bring the whole family to the Northeast Racquet Club and Fitness Center at the corner of Cruistown Road in Grand Avenue. Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you are a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAY-EASY. Get pain-free physical therapy. At PTW, we know that sometimes physical therapy can be tough and painful, so we do whatever we can to get you feeling pain-free again. Each one of our centers is equipped with an Alter-G anti-gravity treadmill or warm water therapy pool to unload your aching joints. From pre- and post-surgery rehab, fitness programs, and work injury rehab, PTW is your go-to therapy provider. Call or visit us online to schedule your PTW visit today. 
This segment is brought to you by Sluggersville, Philadelphia's first premier year-round indoor baseball and softball training facility. With over 40,000 square feet of turf and 22 cages, Sluggersville is the largest of its kind in the area. Call 215-673-1258 to schedule your rental or training session. Welcome back to Varsity Voice. We are joined now by Aaron Ace Carter of the Philadelphia Inquirer. And Ace, a couple of big games in the Catholic League this Friday night. Got to start with Roman versus Archbishop Wood. Friday night at 7 at Ben Salem High School. This is a monster matchup. Yeah, Ari, this one's going to be fun to watch. Uh, I, li I like this Roman team. They're young, they're inexperienced, but they got some new faces with Alan B. Tran transferring over from Fells. This is a dangerous team going against uh, Colin Gillespie and Archbishop Wood. There's a lot of matchups in this one that I like. Gillespie, I just mentioned, going against Lynn Greer III. Uh, just a freshman for Roman. Gillespie, the established senior, going to Villanova. Had a great game against uh, Newman Goretti, 42 points. Um, and Greer the third, when they played against Newman Goretti, you know, he had a really good first half, was limited somewhat in the second half, but that's a, one matchup that I, that I think is going to be telling for this game. Well, it's not just Lynn Greer the third who provides an interesting mismatch for Roman. Absolutely. We talk about Seth Lundy, sophomore forward, about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, can score it down low in, in, the, in the paint, can shoot, step outside and shoot the three. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Lamar Stevens, not quite as strong as Lamar was when he was a senior, but sort of similar skill set, shoots it a little bit better from the outside. Than, from three anyway than Lamar did. Uh, but this matchup could be interesting with uh, Seth Pinckney, 6'11", junior for Archbishop Wood. If that's what John Mosco decides to do and match Pinckney against, um, against Lundy, it's going to be a difficult matchup for Lundy to be able to shoot over the top of that 6'11", long-armed um, Pinckney. That's true, but at the same time, Pinckney not quick enough to deal with Lundy and probably not athletic enough either. So that will be an interesting matchup. It's going to be a great game. Again, that's Friday night, 7 o'clock at Ben Salem High School, Roman versus Wood. Another great game, our SFBN Game of the Week, Bonner Prendy and Archbishop Carroll and Ace Weil. This is not like the big matchup like Roman Wood. This game has a lot of playoff implications for the PCL. It really does, and sort of a role reversal uh, for these two programs. Carroll, the established, uh, usually powerhouse programs, a little bit inconsistent this season, young players this year. Uh, Bonner Prendy on the other side struggled for about four or five years there. Uh, since Jack Kunkan has taken over, though, three years ago, that this team has been on the rise, this program has been on the rise. It's going to be an interesting matchup. And this Carroll team can sometimes be plagued by inconsistency as well. As Ace said, with young teams, sometimes the offense can get stagnant. It doesn't move around a whole lot. It's just your shot, my shot. Right. It becomes sort of a, they've been a conundrum sort of all season long. Yeah, and that, that's probably indicative of losing Josh Sharkey, a senior point guard who graduated, and Ryan Daly, uh, another graduate who really filled it up and was an offensive leader for them. But this team, uh, start with A.J. Hogard as a freshman point guard, that sort of tells you a little bit about inexperience right there. And Justin Anderson's a junior. And you're right, Mike. When, it, when they start to break down, it sort of becomes, you know, I'll shoot it, then you shoot it. There's no real flow and continuity to, to the offense. But when they're rolling, they're rolling and they're distributing that ball. Through Sunday, Carroll was 5-6, and six, Bonner 6-5. Six and five. Big playoff implications for that bottom tier of the PCL playoff picture. Now, in the public league, the playoff brackets, they're pretty much set. And, uh, you know, what's very interesting, Mike, is in 2A, we've talked about MCS and Constitution all year, but the funny thing is one of those two teams will be eliminated in the essentially the third round of the playoffs. Now, that is a tough look, but there are a couple of good things about this. One, it doesn't necessarily mean that either team is going to be eliminated from the state playoffs if they do reach that third round, which we all expect they do. But secondly, a lot of times in these tournaments, we just kind of look as we're filling out a bracket and go, okay, that's a short thing, that's a short thing, that's a short thing. It's good to finally see one of these matchups early in the tournament where we're like, hey, something, you know, we have no idea what's going to happen here. Mike, and that's a great point because there's definitely no short sure thing here with MCS and, and Constitution. Uh, two rival schools know each other well. Uh, the Mighty Elephants beat Constitution last season to advance to the PIAA playoffs. Uh, this team for MCNS, I, I like what they've been able to do lately. Uh, Malik Archer, senior guard for them, sort of carried the, uh, kept them afloat early offensively, getting like 26 and a half points per game, per, per game. They're getting some help offensively off the bench now, and I think that makes them dangerous. Now, for the on the flip side, Constitution, I think what's, what's always been the case for Constitution this season, in my opinion, has been finding that balance between Maurice Waters getting the ball down low in positions to score and Tamir Green on the outside facilitating and, and shooting from the perimeter. Should be a great matchup, which would be the third time they play each other and possibly a fourth time in states. Should be a lot of fun. Ace, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Check out what's coming up on the Sports Fan Base Network.
time to make our picks. And uh, Mike, a couple of weeks ago, I pulled even with you overall. I'm still behind in basketball, but uh, I made up some ground. So you ready to go? Let's do it. Okay, so first game, Philadelphia Catholic League. We just talked about it. Roman Catholic, Archbishop Wood, great game. It's going to be a great game. I'm done picking against Archbishop Wood. Colin Gillespie is fantastic. I I'm simply going with Wood in this game. Well, now I know Roman Catholic got blown out by Newman Goretti, but something is telling me that Roman is going to pull out this game. I love Lynn Greer III. I love Seth Lundy. B. Tran is phenomenal too. I think if Roman can keep it close, they're going to have a chance to overtake Wood in the fourth quarter. So I'm going with my gut here. I'm going with Roman Catholic. Friends League Championship Games. We'll start with the girls. Who you got? I'm going with Shipley in this game. As I said, I think we learned this on Sunday. Experience matters. Four state championship games in five years in the pace of for this Shipley school. I'm going with the Gators. It's going to be a great game. I'm going with Abington Friends. I think the Roos have done a great job this year. They've got the D1 talent and D2 talent. They've got the young freshman center in Mott. Already beat Shipley this year at Shipley. That says something to me. I'm going with AFS. In the boys game, I don't know if it's going to be much of a decision here, but who you got for the Friends League Boys Championship? West Town. <laughs> uh, just threw me off there, but I'm going West Town too. I mean, you, what else can you say? Can't say. We've said it all, <laughs> right, Mike? <laughs> you kept me speechless, but hey, we'll see what happens. And uh, those two games, uh, we'll see who ends up winning the coin flip on that one. Should be fun. Mike, thanks for joining me as always. Always a pleasure. Check out our highlight of the week. The highlight of the week is brought to you by the Physical Therapy and Wellness Institute. Go to www.ptwinstitute.com to find a location near you. Devereaux to the lane, rejected. Nice defense by Richard. Ford deflected by Turner. Can he save it in bounds? Are you kidding me? Back the other way with it. Ty G. Leach. Crossover move on Richards. Bounce pass to the corner. Wolf, Devereaux. Turner takes a three, deserves it, oh. and drills it. Oh, my. Did we give out the stole agency play the game already? We might have to rescind wow. it. Wow. High off the glass. Select video equipment for Varsity Voice has been provided by DMP Video. DMP Video, you provide the moment, we'll capture the memories. For more information about our videography services, please go to our website at www.dmpvid.com. The Sports Fan Base Network. This area's leader in high school sports broadcasting is continually bringing you the most in-depth coverage. Join us for Varsity Voice every Thursday on TCN and CSN, where we'll have interviews with players, coaches, writers, and more, plus analysis, highlights, and a variety of features on major topics in the Delaware Valley high school sports community. Tune in every Thursday at 6 p.m. on TCN and 11.30 on CSN for the best and only high school sports show around, Varsity Voice, presented by SFBN.